so I mentioned briefly in the last video that although the diagonalization formula is very useful, you can't always do it. In other words, not all matrices can be diagonalized in the way I described. And the critical point was that in order to derive the diagonalization formula, we needed to assume that the matrix has as many eigenvectors as the dimension of the space. So an n by n matrix should have n eigenvectors. And this is not always true. So here's an, a simple example where it's not true. The matrix A, which is 5 minus 3, 3 minus 1. Let's try and calculate the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of this matrix. Okay. The eigenvalues. So this means solving det A minus lambda I equals 0. So A minus lambda I is 5 minus lambda minus 3, 3 minus 1 minus lambda. That's 0. 5 minus lambda minus 1 minus lambda plus 9 is 0. Lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 9 minus 5, that's plus 4, is equal to 0. Lambda minus 2 squared equals 0. So you see, first of all, you only have one eigenvalue, which is lambda 1 equals 2. Okay. So this can happen if the polynomial, the characteristic polynomial, has a double solution. So here, x lambda equals 2 is a double solution of this polynomial. So in this case, you can have less eigenvalues than, than n. Okay, and we, could also, we should also check that there are less eigenvectors as well, because it's possible that one eigenvalue could have more than one eigenvector. So we need to solve a minus lambda i times v equals 0. So put lambda equals 2 into this equation, you get 3 minus 3, 3 minus 3, x, y equals 0, 0. So this means x equals y. And if I choose x equals 1, then we get the eigenvector v1, which is 1, 1. But that's it. So indeed, this matrix does only have one eigenvector. And if you've only got one eigenvector, the diagonalization formula doesn't work. Okay. So in conclusion, A only has one eigenvector. And this is a big problem. This means that you can't diagonalize the matrix. Okay. So in this case, you can't diagonalize it, so you can't use those nice formulas I showed you to calculate the exponential or the log or whatever. So that's a shame. It doesn't work all the time. Never mind. However, there are certain kinds of matrices where you can say that it always will work. Certain kinds of matrices always have n eigenvectors. And these matrices are precisely the ones I described last week. The symmetric, anti-symmetric, orthogonal, and Hermitian, anti-Hermitian, and unitary matrices, you can prove that they always have n eigenvectors, therefore they can always be diagonalized. And you can prove some other things about them as well. Okay. So before I, I'm going to state the theorem about those special matrices. Before I do that, I need to define one thing. Um, so for real vectors v and w, we define the dot product v dot w. This is, so if I say the vector is v1, v2, up to vn, if it's an n-dimensional vector, w1, w2, up to wn. This is defined as the sum i goes from 1 to n of vi, wi. So this is the definition we saw in the, the lecture on vectors a few weeks ago. Right? Now, you can also define the scalar product for complex vectors. But it's not the same. For complex vectors, you define it with the first vector 
in the complex conjugate. So I take the complex conjugate of V and multiply it by W. Okay, so the reason you define it like that will hopefully become clear by the end of this week, but that is the way you define it. So I just want to note, you can write this as V transpose times W. Okay, so that gives you a vector like this times a vector like that, which you multiply in the normal way. And this one, you can write as V dagger, so the adjoint, times W. Because okay, that, again, gives you the vector like this times the vector like that. So this is how we define the scalar product for complex vectors. And the definition I've already made for real vectors is applied for complex vectors too. Namely, if V dot W equals 0, then we say V and W are orthogonal. Okay, so for real vectors, this means 90 degrees angle, right? For complex vectors, it doesn't mean that because the complex conjugate there. Okay. So that defines the scalar product for complex vectors and what it means for them to be orthogonal. So now I can state this theorem, which tells you that these special matrices are always diagonalizable. So this theorem I'm going to split into three parts because it is slightly different for the different kinds of matrices you can have. So the first one says that if A is an n by n symmetric or Hermitian matrix, Look up those definitions if you don't remember them. If I have a matrix like this, then three things. The first part says that you always have n eigenvectors. So A will have n eigenvectors, and we'll label them v1, v2, up to vn. Now this is a very important result, because as I said, if you have n eigenvectors, then you can diagonalize. So the diagonalization formula works for these matrices. Okay, that's the first part. The second part is that for these matrices, the eigenvalues are always real. So A will have n real eigenvalues. which I can call as usual lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n, and they are real. Okay. And finally, the eigenvectors are all orthogonal. So this means that vi dot vj is equal to 0 if i is not equal to j. So for real vectors, this means they're all at 90 degrees to each other. Okay? But it also applies for the case where the eigenvectors are complex as well. So that's the statement of the theorem. I will prove this theorem in the final video this week. Um, before I do that, I just want to complete it for the other kinds of matrix you can have. So the next one is for anti-symmetric and anti-emission. So if A is n by n anti-symmetric, or anti-hermitian, then, okay, so the first part of the theorem is exactly the same. Again, they will always have n eigenvalues, sorry, n eigenvectors, they are always diagonalizable, and the last part of the theorem is the same. The eigenvectors will always be orthogonal. So the only part which changes is the second part. For a symmetric matrix, the eigenvalues are real. For an anti-symmetric matrix, the eigenvalues are imaginary. Okay. But again, importantly, you can always diagonalize. And the last version of the theorem 
is for orthogonal or unitary then and again the first part and the last part of the theorem are the same it has n eigenvectors you can always diagonalize the eigenvectors are orthogonal but in this case the matrix A has n eigenvalues with size 1, so lambda i equals 1. Okay, So these can be complex, so this means that you can always write lambda i is equal, okay, so lambda j let's say, lambda j is equal to e to the i times theta j for some angle theta. And this is true of all of the eigenvalues. They all have unit length. So that's the theorem. As I said, I'll prove it in the last video. This one, though, I just want to say we've already seen an example of this. When we looked at the rotation matrix, that's an example of an orthogonal matrix. There we found that the eigenvalues were lambda plus minus, which were e to the plus or minus i theta. Okay, So exactly as stated here. They have length 1, they are complex numbers with length 1. And also, you found that V plus was I1, V minus was 1I, and then we can check this part of the theorem as well, that they're orthogonal. So V plus dot V minus, this is equal to, remember, V plus dagger. So you take the complex conjugate as well times v minus. So this is minus i1, that's v plus dagger, times 1i, which is minus i plus i, which indeed is 0. Okay, So as claimed, the vectors are orthogonal. Right. So that's a simple example of this theorem, and as I said, next I'm going to prove it.